Yeah, no, baby. Uh, well, uh, another episode, man. I'm biting on butt. It's your boy Rillo. It's my dogs. What's happening? T.Y. C.J., baby. Hey, look, we out here, man, on the historic steps of Motown, man, the museum, man. Hitsville City in the background, dog, where all got started with Barry Gordy way back in the 60s, 70s, man. And uh, y'all can't see this, but on the backdrop, is we looking at where the house with a Ruffin, uh, David Ruffin stayed at, bro. Mississippi, baby. Like, everybody that, that, that Barry brought up here, they literally lived in these cribs and these cribs behind us. So uh, to sit on these steps in this iconic part of the city, in Motor City, man, it's an honor, uh, it's an honor and a privilege, and it's dope because... I think that it's also iconic that we're talking about hopefully electing uh, the first woman um, president first of the United woman, States, first man. Black woman. First black woman, first woman, man. And for for the heat makers of Hitsville, USA. Yes, sir. And we making hit on hits on black with no chaser. That's right. That's right. I mean, it can't hey, get more Mr. Kind of, Postman. It, hey. can't, it can't get more kind than that, dog. Hey, look, man. We have now hit Philly. We've now hit Detroit. Yeah. And we're seeing some similarities, and we're seeing some uh, differences out as well. But some of the things that we're seeing for sure is that black men are locked in, and black men are engaged uh, for sure. for across sure. the country and in their communities. And so, man, I think that uh, that's one of the most exciting things that I, I've uh, had about this is just meeting the people, bro, the culture yeah. uh, from city to city, bro. And then just even to put on top of it, Detroit is the blackest city in America. In so America. We want to talk black. to black people. If we don't come to Detroit, then we missing the mark. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and, and being here, man, like, this is my first time here. And, like, you know, I think, like, I don't really know what I actually really thought of Detroit. I know folk from Detroit. I went to school with people from Detroit at FAMU. Mm -hmm. And so they all good people. Uh, but, you know, by being here, though, man, you get a sense of, like, really who they are, right? It's like, in a way, it's like it kind of contextualizes and colors, like, Everything, right? And then, like, like Detroit is, man, if you ever been to Detroit, you got to come to Detroit, dog. You There's go. some energy Detroit. and yeah. magic in this city that, and, and I would say this, and, and touching on the brothers that we kind of spoke to is, they really tapped in, bro. Like, it ain't yeah. no, like, we just kind of just playing this out, we outside oh, looking man. in. They like, know. folks are tapped in uh, into what's going on, not just in the community, but more broadly across the United States. And you know what? That being tapped in probably had a lot to do with why Detroit was so influential in the last election. Yeah. Uh, why Philly was so influential. I mean, because, I mean, it, there are some plugged in individuals with regard to the people that we've had the opportunity yeah. to talk to. Yeah. And it's not like, and this is from, like, literally, you walking up to people on the street. It's not, it's not like we curating these experiences. This mm -hmm. is literally like, hey, you need to go talk to bruh. Like sometimes that happens. Like you need to go talk to dude, but also it's literally guy we guy we met on the street in Philly, like Lawrence. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. He was the first person we actually had the opportunity to talk to. Lawrence man dropped plenty of knowledge on us. Uh, he expressed his concerns with uh, the community, expressed his concerns about about students, children having the opportunity to have access to extracurricular activity and public education. And uh, his hopes, what what he worries about, mm -hmm. and what he hopes for, and so like, and that was the very first person we talked to. Right. And when we talked to him, bro, I, I felt like, bro, we doing a, we doing a the right thing, we're doing a good thing, and we're we're showing we're letting black men speak for themselves instead of letting other people speak for black men. Yep, that's right. And, and thinking about you know with the Stovall man at a. Uh... At uh, uh, uh Hot Sands. Hot yeah, Sands, Sands, baby. Sands, bro. And we had Hot Sands, bro. And from, you could tell that brother owned, like, everything. Like, whatever is within his grasp. And I could, we walked in, he was like, bro, I know y'all thinking y'all gonna tell me what y'all gonna be doing. But y'all live in High Sam, baby. Look, it's my, my shit. It's my shit. I said, I said, look, Rich <laughs> I was like, yo, but, but you could tell that man that, I'll tell you this. I've I've never been in a in a spot in any city where it felt like that. Yeah. Hot Sam to me, dog, was like to me it's a it's national an treasure, bro. It's an institution, yeah. dog, yeah, it's in the community. It it was like um kind of like how you feel when you go in a barbershop, but it was just different from yeah. that. Yeah, like, bro. It was uh, you know what I mean? Like it was flavor. Men was coming in and just congregating and it was a safe space for black men to convene with each mm -hmm. other to talk about real issues. And yeah. I'll tell you this, yeah. if you want to uh, dress like you from Detroit, 
Yeah. Go to Hot Hey, man. Hey, 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 this, they had some shoes. Hey, there was some shoes up in that motherfucker. I like, man. It was, <laughs> hey, them, them shoes cold in the motherfucker. I'm going to have to give you some Hot Sam shoes, dog. They hey. had some gators in there, too. I know they had, hey, too. Man. Somewhere. Hot Sam. Hey, Sam's had flavor, man. Yeah. And, uh, but we had an opportunity to also uh, hit other parts of the city here in mm. Detroit. Uh, man, up in over up in Livernoy, right? Yeah, so Livernoy, Livernoy had some uh some some energy around that man. We talked to Rufus, uh brother that's plugged in, been in that man, been in that business community for over twenty years now, right? Yeah. And uh it, it, it's it's been built up and uh I talked to Ian Ian Conyers back there, former state. Uh, former uh, uh, senator on the state side from Michigan. Yeah. Uh, from that area, and folks who are familiar with the Kanye's family, I mean, Dope. let's be, let's be. Look, if y'all don't know who John Kanye's is, you should definitely look up John Kanye's, bro. He was the chairman of the House for a long time, dog. Yeah. Like, he was a, one of the longest standing members of Congress ever. I, I right. believe, bro, to, to to this day. And one thing about people should know about what John Kanye did, which is a lot of things, he actually started the bill to uh, investigate um, reparations, which was H.R. 40, which was picked right. up by the late Sheila right. Jackson uh, Lee out of uh, Houston, right. Texas. But he also actually, for a very, very long time, the National Holiday of Stevie Wonder, bro, like, John Kanye did that. Really? He, yeah, he, he did that. Okay. Bro, he did that. And then, you know, because Stevie Wonder, bro, is from Michigan. That's right. And he's a recorder right there. Ooh. Yeah, so he, like, <laughs> he's playing in the background. He's one of playing in the background right so, now. And people don't know that. And I had to learn this, man. This is also another fun fact is that Happy Birthday song. Do y'all know who Stevie Wonder uh, made that yeah, song for? Dr. King. Dr. Baby. King, bro. Come on now. Look, Come on, I got to ask, bro, because look. Look, 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 look. We got to look over there. Yeah, we were breaking cards for stuff like that, man. Because, like, look, I'm just saying because, like, everybody don't know these things. That's like, true. But Philly is another city with soul too. You That's know what right. I mean? Like literally, like soul music. We we had soul the birthplace of soul. I don't know Mississippi the birthplace of soul. Yeah, yeah. Like, Mississippi. Like, see, yeah. We ain't gonna be remiss on that. But when we talk about recording it and when we get into soul music, Ted and we're about and... right here. But you go into Philly, it's neo soul. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Erica, That's not Erica, but Jill Scott. Yeah, the Roots. Man, awesome man. Boys to men. Come on, dog. Bell, Bell, DeVoy, all them folks. I messed the same group kind of so much. Like, they from I wanted to say ABC, you know, because you said. But then I was like, man, they from Boston, yeah, though. But, but yeah, like, like, but, but yeah, boys to men, man. It's a, it's a, it's and it's beautiful, man. Like, it's, isn't Jody C from Philly? Oh, I, I think they're from North Carolina Virginia. or something like that. North Where Carolina, is? yeah, somewhere around there. Oh, okay, I made them, okay. But, uh, but speaking even, of that, let help us out with them jokes and facts so we can go. Um, man, CJ, so we don't that. Man, right it's just, I, I just keep on, you know what I'm saying? I just keep on, hey, man, every, God God it's God like every time I close my eyes, you know what I'm saying? That's how it went. I'm going to see you close your ass out here. Yo, man, it was just, hey, bro, this how you know we really in Detroit. Ain't no special effects. My eyes is watering like Wesley Snipes in New Jack City. So, you know what I mean? Oh, that being said, man, this episode shows why it's bigger than Nino Brown. It's bigger than all of us as individuals. And that's really what resonates from uh, city to city is that brothers do understand that while there are things that directly impact them individually, they're thinking on a broader level. The ones that we've had the opportunity to talk to, community leaders, entrepreneurs, uh, everyday, everyday individuals are thinking about... Uh, what matters to them and uh, how this election impacts them and uh, why they can't be misinformed. And you're going to find, you're going to, you're going to see some knowledgeable brothers, knowledgeable brothers on this episode. Yeah. Bro. And then yeah, we got man. a chance to talk to some more. We're going to get a chance to talk to some more brothers out here yep. and talk to them uh, from different walks of life, different experiences, what have you. And we know at, at the same time as we're talking to a lot of folks right now who get it, we still want to talk to some brothers who don't get it. Yeah. And so we can bring some of that into the conversation because sometimes not getting it means that somebody hasn't given you the right information. Right. And sometimes it's just more of, it's not it's not necessarily someone trying to be ignorant and nefarious with the way, what they're doing. Well, there's a lot of folks that's doing that. Sometimes we just repeating stuff because we might have heard it somewhere and it might have sounded credible. Right. And that's the thing that these people are doing in this misinformation campaign. Yeah. They're trying to make stuff sound credible. Yeah, right. it's, it's loud just, and wrong. Yeah, it's right. loud and wrong. You repeat just it, making it sound and you a know, little bit just like it has some truth in it. Hey, well, so, so I got to so on the loud and wrong part, right? Yeah. Because let's talk, let's touch on this like loud minority for a second. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. These, these more or less, the they be botting, right? But they be bought too. Yeah. And, uh, but like, 
what, what's some examples out there right now y'all hearing that just loud and wrong? Oh, man, the one I keep hearing over and over again is uh, people saying, one, Kamala and Barack Obama, right, aren't like us. And so they're trying to point to oh, that's Barack Obama's uh, parents' heritage and how he was raised, where he was raised. Same thing with Kamala as well, too. And, you know, we're talking about two people who are mixed heritage. We have so many mixed heritage people that are in our communities right now. Yeah. A lot of folks you grow up with, you see every day, you play baseball, football with, all the rest of the stuff. You have no clue where their parents are from. All you knew was that mom and dad kind of looked like us, or maybe it was white, or maybe it was another, but you had no clue. We've all been together this whole damn time. And now, for this political moment, for people to decide we're going to separate who we are, it's stupid. Right. And uh, I think another one that's been a big misconception, two things, uh, them attempting to characterize Kamala Harris as some type of border czar or something like that. That's some type of framework that they built up. When that ain't, that could be fun, couldn't be further from the truth, right? Uh, Kamala Harris was assigned to study uh, some things with regard to immigration in order to be able to get an understanding of uh, the violence that's taking place in order to understand why people were fleeing from their home countries in order to be able to, ju to just try to quantify that from a data standpoint. But uh, at no point in time as vice president has she been in control of the borders. And uh, I think that's the other misconception is thinking that uh, she has the, the, the capacity to truly push policy as vice president when no vice president in history. I mean, like you go back to 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 uh, to to uh, what's the what's the well, Mike Pence? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What policy you remember from him? Oh, look, Mike Pence, Dick Cheney, bro, yeah, like Joe Biden when, Biden, when he was, when vice, he was president, vice president. Dog. Like, bro, look, none of these folk did Dan nothing. Quayle. Yeah. It's really, <laughs> honestly, it wasn't Dan really, Quayle. I mean, the crazy part is George it, Bush the first. It right. wasn't really until really recently VP Harris, they made her have a platform entering as the actual but um, vice president. But that's not that's really That's intentional thing. strategic on exactly. their part, right. trying to just drag into this because right. they know where she is. I think, I think, they they understood that uh, the moment at, at some point and at some time it was going to be necessary to build bridges and have a transition to uh, someone like Kamala having the opportunity to really do this and like for me it's exciting, bro. Well, that's mm -hmm. super excited too. I mean, I think even on top of this though, it's like I, I call them you know these YouTube political scientists. Yeah. You know, they, they watch a couple videos on YouTube and now they Bro, think they understand doing, I'm about looking how this right works now, and all the rest of this. Hey, don't even say that motherfucking look, thing. Look, look, it's, it's, hey, it's, dog, the thing I is, know, but clown, clown. The thing is, I, and I, I respect people who have taken the time to go and Man, educate themselves name? in the best way possible to really learn how these things go. Look, the, the whole political arena, when we get into government, yeah. we get into politics, that shit is tricky. It, and it, it's a lot of different yeah. layers of things going on, a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. And we try, I, I'm here and I say we, but there's some folks out there that take one little bitty piece right here that they might have a, a misunderstanding of and trying to articulate that as it's a whole thing. And it's absolutely wrong and, and, and backwards. Yeah, man. I mean, like, I'll say it like this, bro. Uh, don't get your research um, the comments, one, uh, actually go and do the research. Uh, there are actual real sites that you can go to to fact check things. I use politifact.org a lot. Uh, I use that one a lot. And I use a couple of other fact checkers in order to be able to confirm. Uh, earlier, I responded to somebody and they were like, why does it sound like you're reading? I'm like, because I'm, I'm reading what I wrote when I did the research to yeah. be able to respond to you accurately. Yeah, uh, because they, if I'm going to respond to you, I think it's important to respond to you with facts. And, they they and want honestly, you to shoot off the top of the dome like Trump. And, and, no, and honestly, I ain't never going to do that. It's too important. Okay. I think it's okay to find your first your first search terms to begin down something, like figure out, like, hey, where do I begin? Because sometimes people may have a half truth in there where we don't know exactly, so they're just talking off the cuff, and some of that may be true, and that may lead you to the, the real truth, right? And so, to your point, man, I think that, like, 
however you start, cool. But make sure you finish with the actual truth, the full scope of what you're looking for. Yeah. Because like, you know, Conscious Lee always says, me search over research. Yeah, yeah. And, shout out to uh, Conscious. Shout out to Conscious, shout shout out to Conscious shout bro. Out to and like, and I think a lot of folks do just enough research to validate themselves and like with their thought. Yeah. And Ooh. if they just went one more page over. Look confirmation been, bias. Look yeah, confirmation. That's what I mean, the thing is, when they go the page over and it doesn't uh, confirm or it, it it disagrees with what they believe, then they 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 don't want to listen to it. Because if you do more research on something, sometimes you have to figure out, I was wrong. And if you are not yeah, challenging your own it. self, right? If you just believe that what you know right now is the truth and it will forever be the truth and you don't decide to learn anything else, that's ignorance. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's ignorance. I don't know if it's the, the Webster's definition of ignorance, but it sounds ignorant as hell to me. Yeah. I mean, look, I... I Look, what I and we and keep on talking about the the bots, right? And like you know, we even put out the post today, man, about uh, you know Project Twenty Twenty Five. Yeah. And folks just loud and wrong about that, right? I think one person said that the Heritage Foundation endorsed Kamala Harris. Yeah, what kind and of I'm shit, like, bro? What? Like, first that of all, sound it, bro. the Heritage Foundation. Like, you, you, you would know right off the bat. When, that, first of all, I ain't gonna lie. Every every time I hear the word heritage, heritage. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but it's not, it's, it's, it's about this. Yeah. It's like the words like kingdom, heritage, yes. uh, uh, revolution. Because it's gotta feel like since I even hear revolution, right, or oh, whatever, or constitution, I'd be like, hey, bro, patriot, uh, patriot. It's a word. Patriot. It's a red flag. Flag on the play, dog. Flag heritage, on the play. Patriot, dog. What the flag is like, that shit, dog? Because you know that shit gonna be one thousand percent. So bull. Like, yeah, like I mean. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that uh, you're no patriot. Like free thinking, free thinker. Oh, that's another that's one. Oh man, free thinkers don't think at all most of the time. <laughs> Them motherfuckers is a free dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they gonna have to bleep that. Yeah, I'm sorry. They go. They have to bleep me every episode. Now I get oh, I'm emotional. Now I'm, I'm being emotional. But but uh, man, it's, it's just some it's some phrases and phraseology that you hear, and, and you, you should know, right immediately, back, immediately though, like, understand. Yeah. Not to necessarily dismiss these people, but like, oh, I'm probably going to have to dig a little deeper than whatever they dug to get to where they were trying to go uh, with this information. And, and truth be told, though, man, like, I, I will say this, for any organization, before you start stumbling for them and getting behind them, like, that's like, take Black Widow Chasers, for example. Yeah. We've been a staple on media now for seven years, dog. Yeah. And like, I don't, I don't know one time we, we steered our audience wrong. And maybe if we did, we came back and corrected it, right? So it's not about always getting it right, but it's also having the integrity to admit when you've done something wrong. Right. And that's really the point I want to get to is like about Harris, is that even though she got some things wrong or she could have like positioned it a bit, but whatever it is, she came back and tried to figure out a way to make it right. And I think that a true leader, right, and, and, and a sign of good character and a moral compass is knowing that when I didn't get put my best foot forward, I can admit that, but also know that Remember that we are not comparing, and I keep on keep saying this, we are not comparing Kamala Harris to Jesus Christ or God himself. Right. Like, let's make no mistake about it. They are not perfect. Right. And so, but what we are comparing is to, is that there are candidates in this race, in particular, there are two top candidates right now, which is what, Trump and Harris. Right. And the idea is to compare those two people right. and make a decision on the best information possible. And so when you look at what you have out there with Project 2025 and yeah. Donald Trump, him being a, a fascist, leaning on from, a, from authoritarian uh, position, a dictator position, bro, people keep thinking that, oh, yeah, we need this. I, I was listening to, uh, forget, I was the Daily Show or some other show, uh -huh. and uh, I forget the boy, um, um, dude name. But he be out there doing a funny little kind of like video interview him, but he's like, they be uh, dead serious. You, know, yeah, you talking about it, um, man, light skin dude? Uh, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, why, why? Watch him, watch him, watch him, master. No, 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 no. It, it's neither here nor there. But I mean, like, but you watch his videos, and it was one that struck me, man. He was like, hey, bro, you know that uh, oh, Trump is a authoritarian, like, dictator? He's like, you know, you know, fascism is like Mussolini. He was like, do y'all think we need uh, fascism in this country? And these folk were like, yeah. And he said, do you, so, but do you know what fascism is? Now, take, I want y'all to listen close to this. He, he gave you the definition of what fascism is, right? Which is basically putting one people over another, right? And it's, and, and, but in this case, it's race. And, I, and, and these and these white folk on and I'm saying white folk were like, yeah, we cool with that. So and I, I think they that, believe that Trump is gonna make sure they at the top that's and right. everybody else at the bottom. That's right. right. It's two dangerous things that come out of that, right? Uh one 
is the fact that there are people that are subscribing to it. Uh, two is that there are some black people that also see alignment with that somehow. Well, I, I one of the scariest that. things in the world is the notion that a black man or woman could see alignment with a white supremacist on uh, that, issues that make white supremacists feel emboldened. And Trump is a white supremacist. I, I just want to make, I don't want to scare I don't yes. want to like miss this moment of naming this, right? Because he's at the top of the list right now. If there was a grand wizard of the KKK, then he would be said grand wizard, right? It's like, so I don't want it to be something like we tiptoeing around who we need to call a fascist or a, a, a dictator like person. You lean into Nazi Germany who are Hitler's right. right. I was I was listening to um, some of the speeches that he was saying, it was putting them against what Hitler would say. And he's literally taking exactly well, word for word. Speaking of, that's, speaking wow, of, bro. there's, uh, I believe it was Politico that just dropped an article about when Trump's uh, first presidency mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016 and so, and so on, uh, where he uh, made the statement when a uh, Mexican soldier uh, died uh, and they and the government paid for the funeral, paid sixty thousand for the funeral. Yeah, he actually made a statement about effing Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? Effing Mexicans. Well, it shouldn't cost that much for an effing effing Mexicans funeral. In addition to saying that, he also said uh, that he needs more generals like Hitler had. Hitler generals, like Hitler generals. And the funny part, the irony about that he is said that. I think I was like, I think a former chief of staff, a former maybe. Uh, General from the Trump that he fired or whatever like that. Betrayers or whatever. But he, he talked about the fact that, like, the, the irony is that you wanted people like Hitler generals, but Hitler generals wanted to actually kill Hitler. Like, yeah. he was like, he was like, he's like, he's even Trump don't even understand his own Trump. Like, this how, this how foolish this man is. And yeah. that's why, like, I, I don't know, I don't know how you get, like, I don't know how you get, I don't know how you bring somebody who believes that Trump is, like, that, that if you a black man in America, bro, yeah, and you align with Trump, or you a black person? I, 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 to me, I, like, because I, I wonder, I wonder, are those same black people mad when white folks call them? Well, uh, uh, some of, <laughs> some of them, some of them, uh, some of them try to say it's because they felt the economy was better under him, which is also just an untruth. It's untrue. It ain't true that the economy was better uh, under him. Uh, the economy was was better and improving under Barack Obama, as a result. Of uh, our economy was better under the the last three decades of presidents. Let's say three thirty years of spanning thirty years. Democrats have had the better economy and had to usually lift this country up out of recession or damn near recession that after each Republican by... uh, um, regime I, I, I do administration. Wanna, I do want to like bring in something, right? One, we we don't. The world doesn't need another Trump presidency whatsoever, right? No, we no. understood all of that means. But I do believe that our brothers and our sisters have legitimate concerns, right? Yeah. Truly legitimate concerns that haven't been addressed yeah, by absolutely. any administration. Absolutely. That's true. That's and true. so when it comes down to like, okay, now we're supposed to put all our support around Kamala because she's a black woman, you know, but my concerns still haven't been met yet. That's right. I still haven't had those things addressed and no one's speaking to it. And so then you get the, a trickster like a Trump who comes in there yep. and begins to parrot some things right. that, that, that have been said. Uh, opportunists. And, and opportunists, 100%. And just says all this stuff flat out. And it's flat out lies. But now you feel like someone is listening to you. is not listening to you for the right reasons. I think it's not listening to point. you because he cares about. It's a listening to you because I want to take advantage of the things you're saying. It's just like, it's just like, uh, I hate to, it's just like a dude who says whatever a woman wants to hear in order to, GTD. Look, that's really. I mean, like that's I me. Mean, like that's why. Like I think that. Look, I think. I, I think that all politicians, to some degree, like do that. I, I mean, because I, that's just part do. of they that's do. just part of politicking, yeah. right? I gotta figure out how can I get these folk on my side, right, to get elected. Uh -huh. But I gotta create an agenda that they can align with. I would just. I would just dare anyone to go out there and figure out. You show me Trump's agenda, right? for black folks, for just this country in general. And then check out Harris's website and, and other candidates' website 
And I'm telling you right now, there's only going to be really one logical Just, conclusion here as it pertains to who it really makes sense to right. vote for this election Don't cycle. let anybody else tell you who Kamala Harris is. Don't let nobody else tell you. You know you, what I mean? Like, that's don't even us. Just you go, should go out there and go research. Look, man. Like, just go look. And But when you research, go to accurate, real sources. Don't go to the bullshit places that you, that are gonna that are going to reinforce <laughs> your conspiracy theory or anything. Don't go down that wormhole. Go to valid, accurate sources that are nonpartisan in nature. Yep. And if you do that... Those are, those are so hard to find now. To be honest with you, it's like it, I know we, we named off in the last uh, podcast and, um, a, few yeah. a few of them, and there are more out there where you can get accurate information, and we know, but there are so many things that are popping up right now just made to miss them. That's fact, when we get into unbot. What we're going to do on this screen right here, we're going to make sure we put up some some uh some sources yeah. that y'all can go to. Like yeah. So that's going to be, when we do the magic of... But don't stop there. When we do the magic. Don't stop there. When you got one piece of information, I think, Willow, you said it earlier, you got to go and research again. Hey, look, when you you got to research again. Hey, look, it's a reason why, dog, when PhDs get PhDs, they got PhDs for a reason. Yeah. They don't pick up one source. They don't pick up two sources. They don't pick up three sources. They got to almost have 40 to 50 to 60 sources to validate the, the actual thesis. They got to so have if your thesis is source. that Trump is, in fact, for me, I, I dare you to go beyond the first video you'll see about Trump stumping for you, so to and speak. you ain't got to get no PhD yeah, in it. So that's what I'm saying. You could just literally go to about five, go to five sources. Go to right. five sources, and I guarantee you right now, none, none of them will point you in the direction of Trump. Right. So whatever you think Trump did, whatever you think he did for you, whatever you think he did for you, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't much of nothing. Because remember, though, the economy that he inherited was from Democrats, right? Mm -hmm. And then he ran the count and ballooned the debt while in office. Moreover, on that particular point on the economy, I think, I forget, was it was it the, the Treasury Department or some whatever the group that does the analysis on... Uh, what the economy will do under each um, president, especially when you're looking at like Harris and, and Trump. Yeah, I think Harris is gonna. Uh, I think hers will kind of balloon the uh, like like middle class. Uh, you know, a, a, in comparison, right? So I think it's like let's say one point seven trillion dollars for Harris. Do you know what the Trump is going to balloon it almost six to seven times more than with Harris? I believe like seven trillion some dollars. The actual national debt is going to balloon to. And we're talking about somebody say trying to run down inflation and drive the economy up and then build more jobs. If you let Trump have it, you won't have a job. All he wants to do is cut taxes. Cut taxes. Cut, cut taxes for uh for, for the billionaires. For, for your billionaires and, uh, and hey, that's and a super wealthy folks. Look at look at who is funding his campaign. It's billionaires. Billionaires. It's big oil. Big and, and the reason that they fund oil and gas, dog. Is, that's how they that's how they get the money. You know what I mean? Like and and those are the people who believe that the economy was doing better. Is niggas who stock portfolios was doing better under him. But the reality is, it's a good. You talking to a good investor right now? Your portfolio do well under anybody if you know what you're doing. Just to be honest with you, so don't 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 let that so don't let that be y'all talking done don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't let that be don't let don't let that that fool you and don't associate that with economy. Economy is how we all are impacted. Yeah. We're talking about That's healthcare. Right. That's right. We're talking about economics. We're talking about education. We're talking about Foreign affairs, foreign policy. We're talking um, about we're talking about common sense gun laws yeah. to protect our children to in protect schools. Our kids, protect These are the communities. same people who are going, yeah, let teachers carry a gun in their class. Like teachers should start carrying guns. Right. First of all, when do we get to a place in our society That's right. where our teachers need guns in school? I remember back in the day, guns you couldn't even gun, have a gun. Like, a, it would be like, like a gun free and drug free zone. zone. Like, like think about that, bro. When you really, really think about it, man. Men have more protection for guns than women have for their bodies right That's now. That's crazy. They men have more ability to control guns and, and have a say in what happens with their guns. The women have well on their body. saying what happens with their bodies. Hey, bro, and, and, and brother, brother Stovall touched that. on that. Yeah, he touched on that when we interview, and y'all and y'all are, you know, that'll kind of follow this uh episode that y'all watching right now. And uh, and I just want to say that if y'all watching it, make sure y'all tap into Black with No Chaser. And that's at Black with No Chaser across all social media platforms. Yeah. We ain't hard to find. Yeah, we'll be having more yep. coming out about, uh, you know, the interviews. Again, I think Tyson, you alluded to this earlier. Uh, but yep. I think that, like, when y'all hear from these brothers, especially Tony, he talked about that. It's like, it's funny, like, and it's, and it's, it's refreshing to talk to a brother 
and that for his most pressing and odd issue that hits home for him the most right now had nothing to do with black men. As he was like, he was like, he had look, three daughters. He said, I got three daughters. And like, look, bro, like, how, who am I? Or any man? Right. How we got? He said, and I quote, "How we got fifty men in the room deciding on what all women do with their bodies? Yeah, that just don't make sense to him. It don't, don't make, make sense, sense to me. To nobody. It should. It shouldn't make any sense to anybody. Look, one thing we want y'all to do is make sure y'all like, subscribe, share this with a friend, and also follow at Black with No Chaser TV, and do that. We got." A couple more stops to go. Where are we going next? We're going to, hey, look, on Monday, which is October 28th, yeah. October 28th and October 29th, we're going to be in Raleigh, Durham, uh, North Carolina, and Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, talking to black men down there uh, in the great state of North Carolina. You got to bring the South uh, into it. The, the South, South got, got something, something to say, baby. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what it is? Hey, hey. The birthplace of where they started doing the city ins you know what I'm saying? And then and uh, just to give y'all a rest students. of the schedule. Yeah. Rest of the schedule, we're going to be back in Philly on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. We got to go and, back uh, to Philly. Pennsylvania is critical. It's critical, it, it bro. Is, it is. right, Probably right now, uh, and I don't even want to say this because they overuse it on the other side, but Pennsylvania may be the most consequential state right now. So we said no shop in Philly. Yeah, we gonna set up shop. We will be there. If y'all, if y'all, if y'all, if y'all brothers see this and y'all in Philly and y'all wanna jump in on camera, y'all got something to say too. We wanna holler at you. Holler us in the DM, man. More than happy to get y'all down in front of a camera. If you know a brother that got something to say, then tell him to holler at us, right? You if you brother, see brother, 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 tell him to holler at us. I think look, yeah. at the end of the day, more the merrier. Um, so you know, I think that, you know, Detroit was a good stop. Yeah. Fantastic stop. Detroit definitely got something to say. We, we know Greensboro and Raleigh Durham got something to say, and we're going to see y'all back in Philly, man. It's your boy Rillo. Hey, what up, though? Hey, yeah, what up, though? <laughs> what hey, up, uh, though? CJ and T.Y., man. It's yeah. Unbody, Unbart. You know, and we're going to see y'all on the ground in a state near you, man. Peace. Right.